Okay, welcome to uh, Unit 8 of Introduction to AP Computer Science. Uh, this particular unit is about 2D or two-dimensional arrays. Uh, now, we've already seen arrays uh, in Unit 6. Uh, we, we've seen array lists in Unit 7, but let's just go back real quick and remind you what an array is. Um, so I can make uh, an array of integers, for example, and I can say scores and let's oops, use the curly braces and let's say here are my test scores, 56, 89, uh, 100, I had a good day, and maybe a 94. Um, so basically we have a set of numbers that are organized and they all have some kind of theme. In this case, they are scores. Um, so what we're gonna be working on today is a two-dimensional array. Um, now a two-dimensional array uh, is an array that has well, multiple dimensions, um, but basically I think what helps to visualize it uh, is, is if you think of a grid. So in this case, what you're seeing basically is a row. Um, but what we're looking at, and this, this is not correct code, is what we're looking at is a, a row, uh, multiple rows. Now this is not how you do it, but you say you had a, a row and some columns. Um, so let me, uh, let me switch over here to a uh, different program. I have this kind of set up for you. Um, so basically let's say we're looking at an Two day, a 2D array, um, we've got a row, we've got another row, we've got another row, we've got three rows, we've got three columns. Okay, so what we're looking at is this is basically an array like we've already done. So this is index zero, that's the column. This is index one, this is index two because there are three items, we start at zero. Now this would be row one, also notice it starts at zero. And then this also has a zero, a one, and a two. And then this has, this final row uh, has a zero, a one, and a two. Um, so for most of what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be looking at rows and then columns. So basically we have kind of an X, Y grid. Um, but what, again, what we're doing is we would say this is row zero, column zero, row zero, column one. So it's kind of Y, X, so it's a little bit confusing if you think of it that way. Um, but if you think of it as rows and columns, it's pretty straightforward. Now I just put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in here, just as an example, uh, like a telephone keypad. Uh, but this could have been 34, this could have been 98. It's, it doesn't have to be any particular value, uh, especially if we're using, for example, in this case, integers. Let's see if I can undo that. Okay, so let's go back to uh, JGrass, which we're using, and get started on a little bit of programming in 2D arrays. Now this is not as long uh, a unit as some, uh, at least the basic concepts, because we've already done arrays. We, we spent a lot of time on arrays already. Um, so we're able to apply what we've learned uh, to 2D arrays. Um, so the first thing I wanna do is I want to create a new array. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna make an array of integers, or 2D array. So normally we do it like that because we just have one row, but now we're gonna have multiple rows. Okay. And I'm gonna call my array just ARR. And I say new int. Okay. In this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a three by three, uh, three by three 2D array. So three rows and three, yeah, three columns. Again, as a reminder, indices start at zero, so it'll be zero, one, two, and zero, one, two. That's it, that's, that's all we gotta do. It's, it's pretty straightforward if you print that, if you run that, you know, nothing, we don't see anything, but that's basically how you create uh, a 2D array. Uh, now this would be a, a blank 2D array. Since it's an integer, each cell, I'm gonna use the terminology cell, each cell would have a value of zero, that's our default value for integers. Okay, so we move on to 8.2, uh, which is basically uh, traversing uh, a 2D array. And there's also some stuff in there about algorithms. I'll do a little bit of that in this video, uh, and the rest we'll kind of practice, I guess, as we go along. So using the example I had here, I'm gonna go ahead and create this. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And let's see if we can do that. So again, there are integers. We have our square brackets. I'm gonna call this board, because um, I'm thinking of this as something like either a, a tic-tac-toe board or something like that. And I'm gonna go one comma two comma three, 
comma, four comma five comma six, and then seven comma eight comma nine. Okay, so notice I've got one opening brace, one closing brace, and then I've got three separate rows, one, two, and three. But again, remember, index-wise, this is zero, this is gonna be zero row, it's row one, row two, and then this is gonna be column zero, column zero, column zero. Okay, so this is basically setting up what we saw earlier. So we got row zero, one, two, and three. We've got row one, four, five, and six, row two, seven, eight, and nine. Okay. So traversing the array, Okay, so we're, we're gonna be using the same basic concepts we did before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say for int row, as I mentioned earlier, we start at zero. Row is gonna be less than three because we've got zero, one, and two. There is no three because we start with zero indexing as always. And then row plus plus. Okay, that should be a semicolon. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. We're going to need to have a nested loop, which we've seen before. And now we, we're going row by row. So for each row, so I want to do this row first. Now I got to go through each column in order. So I'm going to do four, oops, four int call equals zero call again in this case is less than three and then call plus plus okay so now in here what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna print out the cell so watch what I do here system dot out dot print I'm gonna use print here you'll see why in a second board and it's gonna be row call I'm going to put plus, I'm going to put a space after each one. Okay. So this is how you access a particular cell. Okay. So it's the row number. So let's get back to here, make it a little bit easier. So you start with the row number, so in this case 0, and then you do the column. So 0, 0 is 1, 0, 1 is 2, 0, 2 is 3. Row increments, now we go to row 1. 0, 1, 2, then we go to row 2, 0, 1, 2. So we're just going in that order. And then after each row is printed, we'll print a blank line. Okay. So now what we should see on the screen is the same thing we saw over here. We should end up seeing uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Unless we got an error, which that was a while ago, which somebody had told me. Um, Let's run it again. Um, semicolons expected. Yeah, that's going to be one of those days I can see. Okay, and there we go. We need to get the expected output. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we started out row was zero, column was zero. So that's row zero, column zero. Then column increments. We're still on row zero column goes to one, increments, column goes to two, increments, now we're at three, then we print a blank line, move down, and we do the same thing over again. Okay, so that is one way to traverse a 2D array. Now, in this case, obviously, we're going through every single item in order. So we could do the same thing. I'm gonna call this traversing an array with uh, an enhanced for loop. Okay. So watch what I do here. For well, let me just let's take a look at this first. What is this? Okay, thinking about looking at that those symbols and that combination of numbers and commas. What exactly is that? If I took that out of there, what would it be? So hopefully you're thinking to yourself. Well, it is an array of ints, and if you thought that, you would be correct. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do for int, again, this is an array of ints. Each row is an array of ints, 
in an array called board. So in my mind, I'm thinking for each row, which in this case is an array of ints in the board, okay, so for each of these, I want to do something. So now I've got my row. Now what I can do for int value in the row, system.out.print value plus quote space. Okay, and the same thing. After each row, I'm going to print out a blank line. And I should see the exact same thing. Okay, so let me run that. Make sure it's working. Okay, so we got the same thing. One, two, three to nine, and one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, and nine. So it is working as expected. So let me just take a look at this one more time. So what we did there was for each row, okay, print out each value. Print a blank line. For next row, print out each value. Print a blank line. Each row, print out each value. End of the story. So you can see we can traverse a 2D array in the same way that we would traverse a 1D array or a single dimensional array. Okay, so pretty straightforward. We could also do a while loop. I'll leave that as an exercise to the viewer. Um, so basically everything that we did with single dimensional arrays, we can do with 2D arrays just by modifying the code a little bit. Okay, so uh, we had a bunch of standard algorithms that we looked at in both the array unit and in the array list unit. So let's just take one of them and see how we might convert that um, so that it works in uh, a 2D array. So let's think about finding the maximum value. Okay, so if you remember what we did was we took the array, we started with the first value and we said, okay, this is our maximum. Then we traversed the array, we checked every single value, and we said, okay, which one is the maximum? We're gonna do the exact same thing here, okay, because uh, it's the same principle. The algorithm doesn't change, but the, the way the data is accessed changes a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and create an array, or a 2D array, I should say, of scores. Okay. And I'm gonna say, let's see here. I'm just gonna put some scores in there. And we got here, let's see, 45, 85, and let's say 75. And then let's say we got a 97, we had a good day there. 23, had a bad day there, and 76. Okay, so now notice in this case, it's not even. It's not three by three or anything like that. It's actually, uh, we've got two rows, so it's a two by three uh, 2D array. Okay, now if you remember, when we did single dimensional arrays, we just assumed that the maximum value was the first number. It has to be one of the numbers, so we started there. You know, you had to start it somewhere, so we started there. So what I'm gonna do here in this case, I'm gonna say int max value equals scores zero, zero. It's gotta be some value. So I'm basically gonna take a look at this. I'm gonna say, hey, this is my max value for my purposes. And then I'm gonna do the same thing I did before for int row equals zero, not row, row equals zero. Row in this case is gonna be less than two because we've got one row, which is index zero, and a second row, which is index one. So we never get the two. Row plus plus. Now we have the extra dimension we gotta deal with for int call equals zero. Call is less than, in this case it's gonna be three, because we got zero, one, two. Call is less than three, call plus plus. And here's what we're gonna do. If scores, and it's the same algorithm, again we're just accessing the data differently, row call is greater than max value, Then we set the value of max value to the new value. Okay. 
And so this will iterate, or it will traverse, depending on how you want to say it, through all of these values, okay, and it will find the max value. Okay, so system.out.println, max value equals plus max value. Okay, so let's run it, and we should get 97. Let's see what happens. Okay, there we go. We got max value equals 97. Okay, so that's basically all I want to do in this particular video. Um, I didn't want to go through all of the uh, standard algorithms. This would be a very good exercise for you to practice on your own to go through and see if you can get them all working. Uh, most of them will work similar to this, at least the ones where you're you know, searching through the entire uh, space of values. But uh, now the ones where you're reversing, uh, let's say you want to reverse the one and three, the four and six, seven and eight, that might be a bit more of a challenge because you have to think about the row and that sort of thing. But, uh, or shifting might be a challenge if you're shifting you know, around. But um, for the most part, most of them are very, very similar uh, in that you just need to traverse and, and iterate through every single value. Uh, either to find the number of even numbers, for example, or to find uh, you know the number that are greater than a certain value, whatever your condition might be. Okay, so just to review real quick, um, to create a 2D array, uh, you need to declare the type. You need to put two of these, two sets of these, and then you need to just set the size. Remember, arrays cannot change in size once they have been initialized. Uh, and then we could also pre-populate by doing the same thing we did with single dimensional arrays but just putting a bunch of them together uh, and then remember iterating we go row and column now it is possible to go column row you just switch them around it's not a big deal um, but in the case where you're printing you got to go row column or otherwise it's not going to print out correctly um, for our purposes the AP uh, will be, all, as far as I know, all examples will be row and column. So we don't really need to worry too much about column row. Um, so that might help uh, you know, simplify what you need to study. Um, we can use enhanced for loops, but you just gotta be really careful here because what you're iterating through, you know, the board isn't values, the board is a set of arrays, single dimensional arrays. So that's kind of an interesting structure. And then once we have the row, then we can get the values out. So we have two uh, enhanced for loops there. And then as I mentioned uh, just a few minutes ago, the standard algorithms can will all work with the 2D array, but you gotta do a little bit of thinking, especially in, in some of the ones where you're shifting. So you wanna give that some thought. Uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, hopefully this is something we can practice and will help give you a, a, good, a good head start on that. Okay, good luck.